Today's class is quite an important one, and I want to welcome all of you. What we are going to do today is, so far we've looked at deterministic technique. There are several techniques in management science or operational research, which we went through. Some are stochastic, some are deterministic, some are parametric, that's stochastic. Some are deterministic, that is non-parametric. I'll explain all this in the process. Today, we are going to look at ones that are probabilistic. That deals with the possibility or the likelihood of something happening. So we are going to look at probability and I'll be doing the basics of probability, the basics, so that you will be able to appreciate the basic. And then if, if in the process you have a question, you can now ask those questions. All right. So why do you study probability? By the way, probability means the likelihood of something happening, the chance of something happening. Will Russia totally annex Ukraine? Probably, probably not. Okay, so the chances, the percentage, if you were to put a percentage value on it, so you're going to realize that probability is more of percentage, the chance of something's happening. Oh, well, I believe that they, Russia will not be able to completely take over Ukraine. I am of the belief that 90% of the time, they will not be able to do that. 10% of the time, they will be able to do that. Another person will say that 80% they will take over the country. So that is probability, okay? But when you go to real market systems, the conclusions we make about hypothesis depend on the samples you take. So, so what, what is making you say what you are saying? You collect data. When I look at the past year, that what happened? At the time they took Donetsk, at the time they took Crimea, Okay. At the time they took this, at the time they took that, okay? The fact that they've taken Marapu. So, so you, you try to, to look at the sample, the data set, and that is what helps you to be able to know the next thing you want to deal with. The sample will lead to the conclusion. So if you collect a small sample, you are going to get a potentially wrong conclusion. So let's take, for example, if I take a sample of you and I say that based on that sample, okay, 100% um, will pass this paper. Once you say that, you've you, you got to be able to make a generalization based on a larger sample. So I could not have taken the sample of today alone. I have to take past samples to be able to do that. So in life, we always want to know the possibility of things happening in life, generally. For example, a woman is pregnant. What is the likelihood that she is gonna deliver a bouncing baby child given the health problem she already has? What is the likelihood that you are going to be able, I mean, everybody wanna know the future, right? Everybody can predict, can you predict how old you will be by the time you die? What is the probability that you will reach 100 years before death? What is the probability? Can you pinpoint that you can actually be able to be a doctor by the year 2030? That's why we study probability. That's why we study probability. What is the chance of an event happening? What is the chance of an event happening? So, so in probability, we can take an experiment. And an experiment is any situation where an outcome or an event is not certain. Let me give you some situation. I just gave you some example. When, you, when will you die? If you draw a card from a deck of cards. Oh, by the way, those of you who might not know about card drawing, this. This might not interest you, but those who know my interest, if you pick a card from a deck of cards, 
that drawing of a particular card from a deck of cards is, is an experiment. Why? Because you don't know what particular you know, card you're going to get. You don't know whether you're going to take a king, a queen, you know, a jack. You don't know what you're going to take. But this is what I want you all to know as far as this probability topic is concerned. This is the point. Okay. Now let me show you. That probability is a value which is between zero and then one. That is probability. The probability is a value which is between zero and one. Okay. Let me give it less or equal to. So this is probability. So, so when we say that the probability of an event happening is represented by probability of bracket E. That's the probability of an event happening. That's a probability of an event happening. Now, if probability is between zero and one, then it means that one minus the probability of an event happening is the probability of an event not happening. So if I say that this is the probability of an event not happening with a bar on the E, the probability of that event not happening is one minus the probability of the event happening. I'm sure that makes sense. If that makes sense, say yes. If that doesn't, say no. Because I'll use that as a way to be able to go through it again. Okay. The probability of an event happening is one minus the probability of an event not happening. And the probability of an event not happening is one minus the probability of an event happening. If that is clear, say yes. If that is not, say no. So I'll use that. All right. So I have somebody's hand up. All right. So, so keep that, keep that basic principle. Okay. So let me do you some quick event experiment thing. Suppose I roll a dice. Guys, listen. Suppose I roll a dice. Oh, a dice has how many sides? Ludo dice. It has how many sides? Type it there for me. How many sides does it have? Do the dice. Fantastic. Okay, it has six sides. Okay, who is typing for? Okay. Please go and take a cuboid and you see that the sides are six. Okay. Now, so you have six sides of a little dice. Suppose I roll that dice. I roll it. And normally when you are trying to do this game, you want six to appear, right? What is the probability that six will appear? What, what is the chance okay, that six will appear? What is the probability that six will appear? What is the probability? Remember, probability is between zero and one. So it is a fraction. The maximum is one. What is the probability that six will appear? If I roll the dice, okay, the possibilities are one, two, three, four, five, and six. So what is the chance, the likelihood that the number six is going to appear? Well, what you do is that you take the sample size and the value you're expecting that it will appear, okay, the sample size, in this case, the sample size is six, okay, because there are six different possibilities. And then what is the probability that the number six will appear? Okay, out of that sample, the number six will appear once. Okay, so the probability of that happening is one over six. I know some of you have typed the answers already. So the probability of six happening is one over six. But that is not all. I can ask you something. Listen, what is the probability that an even number will appear? Still on this, what is the probability that an even number will appear? What is the probability that if I throw this dice, okay, what is the probability that an even number will appear? 
Let me see some of your answers. Now, somebody can be very quick at copying another person. But make sure that if you don't know the answer, you don't type at all. But if you copy it, okay, it doesn't help your brain. So the probability that an even number will appear is half. That is what most of you are saying. Why? Count the number of even numbers from one to the six. You have two, you have four, you have six. Now remember the sample size is always, in this case, six. So the probability that an even number will appear, how many even numbers do we have? Is three over six. And that is half. So the, the, the chances that you're gonna get an even number is 50%. You stand a 50% chance that an even number will appear. So, Lynn German, these are basics. These, these are the so much basic. Now, let me quickly go to mutually exclusive events. In probability, it's important to distinguish some events. Okay, so what I just did some few minutes ago is to give you some events. Now, an event is a mutually exclusive event. Okay, when that the word mutually exclusive shows that they cannot happen at the same time. That is a simple language. They cannot happen at the same time. They are disjoint. They are disjoint. So, so how would you write the probability um, of, of a mutually exclusive event? Let's say we have an event A. Okay. You have an event A, and then you have an event B. The probability of event A or B occurring, okay, the probability of event A or B occurring A is the mutually exclusive. So you have probability of A occurring and the probability of B occurring. This is a mutually exclusive event. But a non mutually exclusive event is this. So mutually exclusive event. Let me just give you some graph. Okay. Mutually exclusive event is where you have A like this, standing on its own, and then B like that, standing on its own. There's no intersection. There is no intersection between the two of them. Okay. But non-mutually exclusive event is this. In a non-mutually exclusive event, you have A happening like that, and then you have B happening like that. So there is an intersection of A and B. So let's say that you have A referring to you know, males and you have B referring to female. That intersection is the male and female. This is a non-mutually exclusive event. In other words, you can't say that these two events are happening you know, separately from each other. They are not disjointed. These events are not disjointed. They are joint events. And the joint is where you see the intersection. Okay. So for example, you can make a statement that uh, you getting a first class and you not going to school. So one event is you getting a first class Another event is not attending any university. It's not possible. Attending a university and getting the first class are joint events. You got to attend the university to be able to get a, the, the first class. So that, that's an example. So it's important to distinguish between mutually exclusive event, which is this joint, and then joint event. These are the basics. But let, let me go a bit practical, okay? And in this practical, I will take you to a simple exam question. This is a very simple, very simple, real life situational question to be able to get. Look at this question on your screen. The Dean of the University of Ghana Business School analyzed the records of 3,000 students. And these 3,000 students have received a grade in management science during the past four years. So I'm using past data. Now, 
The dean wants to know the number of students who made each grade, A, B, C, D, or F. The dean wants to know the number of those who made each grade. And so the staff developed the following. So look at the event. The number of students that made grade A are 300. That's the first one. The number of students that made grade B are 600. The number of students that made grade C are 1,005. And the number of students that made grade D are 450. And the number of students that made grade F are 150. Keep that in mind. And maybe you want to quickly write this information. Write it down. See, when you are engaged physically in the action, it helps your mind to mentally improve. Okay? So write this down. A is 300, B is 600, C is 1,005, D is 450, and then 150 for F. Now, question. Um, the first question, <laughs> but the first question will require that you do something. So let me take you back to where we were before. So I'm gonna ask you the question here. The first question is this. What is the probability? And again, I'm saying it slow and I'm writing it down for you to be able to. What is the probability since you have written it already? What is the probability? that a student had A. What is the probability that a student had A? Now, the possibility that some of you are probably asking, or oh, can you go back for me to see the data? So what I'm gonna do one more time is go back and show you the data. So this is the data. This time I want somebody to raise a hand and then answer it for me. Don't write the answer. What is the probability that a student had A? Without copying from anywhere, putting all possible books or anything out of your self, and using your own mind to get it right or wrong. It doesn't matter. What is the probability? So let's go to uh, Amanda. What is the probability that a student had an A? Um, 0 0.1. How did you get that? So I put the number of students together. And um, so the number of students who made an A divided by the total number of students. And that's 0 0.1. So Amanda, you put a number of students together. Oh, oh, you did that right here. Yes, sir. And what did you get? So the total number of students is 3,000. So ladies and gentlemen, the sample, okay, we always talk about that, is 3,000. And then the probability that students had an A, how did you work that? So the probability that a student had an A is equal to the number of students who had an A over the total, over the sample, sample size. So that was 300 over 3,000. 3,000, yes, sir. It gave you? 10%. Yes, sir. Perfect. Excellent. Very good. So that is a that is a way to go about it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the number of students that had an A. Now, let's move faster because now that she's opened the, 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 the possible standalone block, let's go to the next one. What is the probability that a student had a C? What is the probability that a student had a C? You can raise your hand and also tell me that. What is the probability that a student had a C? Okay, this mark. What is the probability that a student had a C? Okay, so the probability that a student had a C is uh, the number of students who had a C over the total sample space, which is 1,500 over 3,000, which gives us half of 0 0.5. Perfect. So that is 1,500 over 3,000, it gives us half. That is a probability that a student had a C. 
Ladies and gentlemen, as it stands now, I'm sure many of you can calculate the probability that a student had an F, a student had a B, a student had a B. This is known as marginal probability. Marginal probability. Now, I want you now to quickly calculate the probability that a student had an F. You can raise your hand and tell me that. The probability that a student had an F. Okay, Agnes, the probability that a student had an F. That is 0.05. How did you get that? How did you get that? Okay, please, I took the number of students who got an F, which is 150, all over the sample size, which is 3,000. And then I got 0 0.05. I wanted a fraction. What fraction did you get? One over 20. Uh -huh. okay. All right, so so that is how you got to calculate it. Let me ask a question. Yes. Please, would you want us, I see that for the um, people who had a, you wrote 10%. So yes. um, would you want us to leave it in fraction or in percentage or in decimals? Either one is fine. But normally, and as you can see, you will use those things for further calculations. So it's nice to keep it in decimals. Okay, yes, right. thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to find the probability that a student had A or B, but not both. The probability that a student had A or B, but not both. And let me explain what I mean by that. Remember the word all. All means what? Who can tell me? We've done this before in integer. All, all, you can type the answer there. All means what? This one, I need the answer typed. All means what? All is, is, is plus, very good, very good, okay? All is plus. So the probability that a student had an A or B, but not both, how will you work that? You can raise a hand and then walk us through. The probability that a student had an A or B, but not both. Since you all have the data there, you can tell me how to solve that. You can raise your hand now and tell me that. What is the probability that a student had an A or B, but not both? Okay, let me take it to Mark Van Dyke. Hello, sir. Mm -hmm. Probability that uh, a student had A or B and not both is 0 0.1 plus 0 no, 0.2. No, tell me, walk me through the thing before you tell me 0. Point. Okay, so um, the probability that a student had uh, A is uh, 300 over uh, 3,000, which will give us 0. 0.1. And that of a student getting B uh, is 600 over 3,000, which is 0.2. So putting the two together will give us point zero point three. Okay. Why didn't you put the intersection together? Why didn't you put the intersection together? Van Dyke. Sir, I'm not so clear on the on the question. Okay. Because you need to recognize that the word or. If, if I have the probability of A and I have the probability of B, there is also an intersection. And the intersection here is a multiplication of the two. So okay. why didn't you put that multiplication of the two for that section here? Why didn't you add that? Who can tell me why? It's part of the answer, actually. Who can tell me why? Those of you who sounds are up, I'm going to ask one of you, Alberta. Why? Why do you need to add that? Um, please, um, it's mutually exclusive. It shows that both events are happening at different times. I better start again. I didn't hear it. Um, Okay, please. I'm saying that um, the question is mutually exclusive. 
Because what both events are exclusive. It says event A or B. It didn't, it didn't say that. Um, it didn't say that. Um, they are thinking about it. OK. All right, let me go to Redeemer. Redeemer, tell Another me. Person. <laughs> the question said, but not both. So it means they are mutually exclusive. Exactly, exactly. That is it. The question was very obvious. It says, but not both. And you know that that both is the intersection. So that is why you do not include the intersection. The Redeemer, don't worry, I'm recording this so I know what's happening. Okay. So that is a key. That is a key to the principle of what we are trying to discuss here. Okay, so remember, but not both. And that is important. Okay, let's go to the next question. Um, so, 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 but if the question had been, find the probability of a student getting A or B. If it had been, find the probability of a student getting A or B, you would have included what? You would have included one number. You can tell me. You would have included what number? If the question has said, find a probability of a student getting A or B, and I had not said that, not both, what would you have included? You would have included the both. Yeah, and what would that be? Bismarck. Yeah, Bismarck, what would that be? So it would have just been the probability of A plus probability of B plus probability of A intersection B. Mm. Yeah. Or probability of A plus probability of uh -huh. uh, probability of A only plus probability of B only plus probability of A intersection B, which is the same as probability of A plus probability of B. Take your time. The world is not a straight line. Okay, I'm saying that it would have been probability of A plus a probability of B minus a probability of the intersection. If you ask to find a probability of A, unless or B. yes, unless you are finding the joint. Okay. So so. So please, I thought I was about to ask a question. I thought. Okay, the, so if the, if the question had been you would have told you whether it is mutually exclusive or is not mutually exclusive. Okay. okay. So if the question had said that, and it is mutually exclusive, if it is mutually exclusive, it is the same as but not both. So you do the probability yes. of A, you do the probability of B. Okay. Uh -huh. So the first question, when you subtract the probability of the intersection from the summation? Yes. Uh -huh. So the probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. That is the point. That is exactly how it is. Okay. Yes. I'll be giving you a couple of examples on that. Okay. But let's move on. These are the basics. These are the basics. That's not what we are actually looking for. Now, I want us to look at discrete probability. Okay. I want us to look at discrete probability. Let me take you back to where we were before. Okay. Let's try to learn a little bit on how to model the behavior. Okay, of a sample from oh. This normally happens when there's a 